It's your boy Sid. Welcome to the Dallas Cowboys for Life channel. Welcome to Speak Your Mind All The Time show. I got a special guest with me today. Please introduce yourself. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Jay Tuck coming live and direct from the Cowboys fans only channel. So make sure you follow me on Twitter at JTuck151. What's up, Sid, man? How you doing? Yo, I'm doing good, man. Just here on this Sunday. Can't wait for football to start. And, you know, everything that's going on in the world right now is crazy. I don't want to go right. into it too deep, but I hope you're staying safe and I hope everybody out there is staying safe. Yeah, man. Um, you know, me and the family for our, our end is staying safe. Like, as you mentioned, a lot of stuff going on right now. So all the viewers out there, just everybody all over the world, man, just stay safe, stay smart. And we're going to overcome this together. But I'm ready to get to some football, man. We've yeah. been through a lot. We've been through a lot in 2020. So, 100%, man, 100%. And with that being said, do you think that we will have a 2020 season going into the NFL in August or September, man? Yeah, man. Uh, good question. To be honest with you, if you can kind of go back through my tweets, I was a little bit skeptical at the beginning. Um, I didn't believe we're actually going to have a season. I was just like, there's no way that we're going to be able to cram 100,000 people into a stadium and get to football by September. But kind of seeing some of the news that came out last week that stadiums be able to work at 25 percent capacity and seeing how, you know, I don't believe like COVID is fully just done. But I think people's fear and concerns have drifted away. And so I think that we're going to slowly see, you know, a lot more NFL activity, a lot of football activity overall. I mean, even on the college level, I've seen some schools looking to get back to football. So, yeah, I think football is going to be something we're definitely going to have. And it's something I want. I'm sure you want and everyone watching this show wants because our Cowboys team is loaded this season. Yeah, man. Speaking about being loaded, uh, I, I'm happy with what, we, with what we've done so far. I'm happy with the addition of C.D. Lamb. Great, great receiver. This guy put up some crazy numbers in his college uh, debut in the, la in the three yeah. years that he did play. What do you think that he'll be bringing to the Dallas Cowboys? And do you think that he's worth the hype? Yeah, I think C. Lamb is going to bring what everyone is expecting is another dynamic weapon to our already dynamic offense. I mean, as you mentioned, you watched him back at OU. Um, he was explosive. I mean, he's one of those guys. He kind of reminds me a lot like Dez. Just get the ball in his hands and let him do the rest. Uh, so I think he's going to be utilized a lot. I mean, we're in that 88. The expectation comes along with it. So I think once you add him in a great locker room, and also with the the leadership of Cooper, also Gallup and that whole whole team, um, I think he's going to have a great season. So I think he's going to step in and immediately fill the void that Randall Cobb left. Um, so I'm expecting a, a big season from from City Lamb just out the gate because you know Dak. You know if you think about Cole Beasley and also the season that Randall Cobb had last year, Dak likes our slot receivers. And I think he's going to play a lot in a slot. So, you know, that's one of the things, you know, I'm kind of concerned about as a Cowboys fan is a lot of weapons for uh, Mike McCarthy and Kellen Moore to actually utilize. So I think, you know, it's going to take a while. But I think overall throughout the season, you'll start to see him spike and utilize in so many different ways because he can return kicks and, you know, just give him a screen pass. So, so many different things we can hit you with on his offense. That's why Team 40 Burgers is coming, man. A hundred percent, man. Listen, I just want to... Thank the viewers. We have some people watching. We have a few comments here. We got okay. Krisha saying, Dallas Cowboys, let's go. Big shout out to Krisha. Let's go. And Martin, I want football. I think we all want football. We all want uh, football. <laughs> we, we all want football. So I want to thank those that are tuning in to definitely check out the live stream that we're doing right now. And yeah. going back to what you said, yes, I believe that CD Lamb is going to be a huge, huge weapon going into the season. And I I think you covered this as well before. And I believe that if if we with two guys are covering CD Lamb, it's going to open up doors for other receivers. We have some crazy receivers. We got Cooper. We got Gallup. We now got... Uh, you know, we got as a running back, we got Zeke back there. We got CD Lamb. We got Jarwin. This is right. a big, big season that we're going into. We got a lot of weapons, but not just our off offensive weapons. We definitely got some strong defensive weapons as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the thing. I think when you think about this roster from top to bottom, 
we have the talent. It's just putting the pieces together finally, which I think Mike McCarthy and the staff are finally going to do. Because the talent has always been there. Talent has never been an issue when it comes to Dallas Cowboys football. It's just putting it together at the right times and making sure you're peaking at the right time. So I think even on the defensive side of the ball, as you just mentioned, I mean, with Demarcus Lawrence, I think he's going to take a step forward back to being the Demarcus Lawrence that we're, we're used to, um, adding Don Terrius Poe and you know some of those other guys within the, the D-line, Neville Gallimore, the rookie. I think it's going to have a huge impact. Um, and so they also, you know, possible addition to Randy Gregory, but also Alden Smith and Bradley and I coming off the edge. So there's a lot of different pieces. And I think that's what Mike Nolan, the defensive coordinator, is going to utilize. It's just, you know, the weapons. That's the thing. I think this Cowboys team is just, you know, weapon X, man. There's weapons everywhere. There's weapons in the secondary, on the linebacker core, on the D-line. So it's just putting them all in the proper place to make plays and, and use their capabilities to the best of their position. So I think that's what's definitely going to, um, take part this year, which I'm excited about. Yeah, man, 100%. You know, you brought up Mark McCar- Mike McCarthy, and I think Mike McCarthy coming to the Dallas Cowboys it, within himself, that's a huge addition, a huge huge, cha- huge change to the coaching staff. He, the, the people that he's brought in to uh, assist him with the coaching is totally insane. And I believe yeah. that the Dallas Cowboys and will definitely be heading in a different direction than what we've been in in the last five. Our custom too. Five exactly. plus years. And I believe that Mike McCarthy will put the players in line. And with that being said, do you think that Jerry Jones will let Mike McCarthy do his thing with the Dallas Cowboys? <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that because I gave this analogy, right? And it's kind of like with, with my wife, right? She'll let me in the kitchen <laughs> and she'll let me cook for a little bit until things start to sizzle a little bit, then she comes in. So I think that's how Jerry Jones will do it. I think originally he'll kind of stay away and let Mike McCarthy and the staff do their thing. But if he starts to smell a little fire or something sizzling and doesn't sound right or look right, we get off to a slow start. You know, Jerry's just going to be Jerry. He's always going to intervene. I mean, hell, look what he did to CeeDee Lamb in the draft just that quickly. So Jerry is always going to be around. Uh, but I hope, I hope, I hope that he trusts what he hired and will let Mike McCarthy do what he came to do, which is help lead his team to a Super Bowl. But, you know, Jerry Jones, we know Jerry Jones. He's never going to change. I mean, he's said it before. As long as he's the owner of the Dallas Cowboys, things will remain intact. So I don't, I don't see that happening anytime soon. So, Yeah, man, I have to agree with you. Jerry Jones is definitely uh, one of those guys that he, he, if something goes wrong, He's got to make sure that he's the center of attention. He's the only owner that goes on to do an interview after a team loses. Here's the crazy thing. Um, So I live in Kansas City, right? And I went to the AFC Championship game when the Chiefs beat the Titans. Mm. And it was the first time since I lived in Kansas City for almost 10 years that I actually seen what the Chiefs owner looked like. Oh, <laughs> I, I've never seen. I never. I never. I couldn't have picked this guy out of a lineup, and he comes down there. I'm like, who was that? They're like, that's the owner, Clark Hunt. I'm like, oh, oh, okay. I never seen him. I heard his name before, but I never seen him. That's not the Dallas Cowboys way. Like, you're gonna know who owns the team, who writes the check, who's on the franchise. So, um, Jerry Jones is gonna be hands on some way, somehow. Yeah, man, 100. percent And I t- I think Mike McCarthy will be able to. Um, you know, work around that and make sure that he works with the players the way he needs to. So before right. we move on, I would just want to send a few shout outs. Uh, we have a few people in the channel right now. Jason Germain, he said loads of fan out there. There will be a season, but I think it'll be modified to reflect what's going on right now. So with that mm. being said, that that's a very good intake on how to look at the situation. And I totally mm-hmm. agree that it definitely will be modified. I don't think that the stadiums will allow the, the, the full capacity. I think they're going to go at 50% capacity. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would want to say, no, they're not. But, I mean, with everything going on, and then you also have to think about, I think I read somewhere where it says that if the stadiums were not to have fans, the NFL could lose almost like $4.2 billion if they were to play in a fanless stadium. So, you know, the NFL, we all know the NFL is about the money. Um, so I think it may start off at 25, probably around preseason or so. But I think give or take, you're going to see 50 to 60, you know. So there's no way Jerry Jones is going to shut that door on Cowboys fans because how do you how do you pick? Do you say season ticket owners get in first, you know, so we're not going to have the party deck? You know, so so many discrepancies that goes along with it. I think eventually they're just going to say kind of come in your own risk. So you'll kind of see that 50% slide. But if the team gets off and we're playing well and, 
headed to the playoffs, and especially if we're going through the playoffs, Jerry's going to have 100% in that stadium some way, somehow, if he has to fight for it. Yeah, man, Jerry's all about <laughs> Jerry's all about that money, man, and mm-hmm. that's why he's the center of attention. So, uh, Nate Ruscio said, "I want Josh Allen." Okay, so as a quarterback or backup or what? <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, what are we going to do with Josh Allen? I mean, you, granted, Josh Allen is nice, but you know, if if you want to go there, my man said we can go there. But I think we can both agree that. Dak is our quarterback, and we don't need a Josh Allen. Like, or an I, if he's talking about the Buffalo quarterback, I think that's the Josh Allen that. He's yeah, referring to. I, I think no. <laughs> I think we're good with Dak. And uh, anyway, so we'll yeah. move on from that. Cowboy X Factor, big shout out. Uh, this guy's been following me since the beginning, and I'm sure he's gonna tune into you and go and follow you just now. But uh, he said, let's go Dallas Cowboys for life and Cowboys fan only doing a live stream together. So big shout out to him for the support. Yeah, uh, I appreciate you bringing me on, man. We've been talking about this for a while. So I'm, I'm excited to be on and shouts out to all the followers and subscribers. Yeah, 100 percent. So you brought up a very interesting fact. You talked about Dak. Now, mm-hmm. we're going to touch on this a little bit because this is something that's just dragging on and it's not a topic I want to stay on long, but <laughs> do you think the Dallas Cowboys will do the right thing and sign Dak? Absolutely, man. I think they will. I think, you know, July 15th is that deadline. And this is what I always been saying, like on Twitter and everything. Um, it's a negotiation. It never really goes smooth. And I think both sides are pushing very hard with the negotiation tactics. But let's say, you know, you're going to, like I said, you're going to argue for a raise at work, right? And you're thinking you really want a $12 raise, right? $12 would be perfectly fine. But does it really hurt to ask for a $15 or a $17 raise? So they might say $17. Like, oh, you're out of your mind, Sid. Heck no. Right? And then you might, well, what about $15? No. And they say, no. You know what? We won't do $10. We'll do $12. Perfectly fine. You're good. So I think Dak has a number, but also the Cowboys have a number. But I think the Cowboys know how extremely important it is to have their star quarterback under contract going into this season with the new staff. You don't want any hiccups. You don't want any, um, you know, overlaying conditions and factors when it comes to Dak Prescott. If you think about it back to Des Bryant, you know, even with um, Travis Frederick, I mean, and Zach Martin. I mean, there's always some type of push. And Zeke last year, there's always something when it comes to the Dallas Cowboys and negotiation. I mean, Jerry Jones is a businessman, as we just stated. It's going to be some hardball tactics when it comes to, to the con- contract. But I think eventually, I would say probably – Few days, I'm a market now. Few days after the Fourth of July, they'll get that contract done. I'm booking it right now. You heard it first, live and direct. Yeah, I have to agree. You know, we all know that July 15th is a cutoff date, um, so it's definitely something that has to be done by then. But I know some fans are gonna get mad at me right now, but I have to say it, and I gotta be upfront. I think Dak is getting a little too greedy. Um, I think that. He still has a few things to go out there and prove before he's asking high top dollar like he is. And again, Dallas Cowboys fans are going to get up mad at me, but I got to keep it real. I don't <laughs> well, think. Well, I'm going to get mad at you. I'm going to get uh, mad at you. Okay. So the question I'm okay. going to ask you, Sid, what else do you need to see from Dak? Listen, it's not what I need to see from Dak. <laughs> I just think we need to see how he's going to do with the new coaching, how right. how he's going to do uh, with the new weapons that he has out there. I don't. Okay. Listen. I think he should just be humble and take the 35 mil a year that they're offering him for the five years at the at the fifth year. He wants an additional 10 mil to me. That's right. that. That's just being a little bit greedy on my, aspect. but here's the reason why I say this, it, you know, I, I do kind of understand your point, but if anyone deserves to be overpaid, it is Dak Prescott. I mean, he's done things the right way. And I always tell people, I think people forget and take Dak for granted He really came in barely going to make the practice squad. He had Tony Romo ahead. He had Mm Kellen Moore. Mm -hmm. And he was battling with Jamil Stowers for that that quarterback spot. Romo goes down. Kellen Moore goes down. And he really stepped in from day one, from his first throw away from – remember his preseason throw, it was just like a a touchdown, like a bomb. And it's just like, okay, well, maybe we have something. Mm -hmm. And from day one – he has led this franchise, and there has been some bump in the roads. But honestly, that second season, if Zeke doesn't get suspended, we go right back to the playoffs, and who knows what happens. Um, 
but he's been doing that, making almost dang near less than the kicker. So right now, Dak is saying for the past four years, I gave you rookie of the year. I gave you two division titles. I gave you a playoff win. I beat Russell Wilson. You know, what else do you want from me? I haven't got any off the field trouble. Last year, I threw for four, over 4,000 yards. It's like, geez, Louise, man. I mean, I think from any employer standpoint or employee standpoint, I mean, if you're doing all this work and you can actually show what you've done for the company, it's only right for the company to reciprocate that. I mean, and especially if you look at what Zeke did last year, getting his contract way earlier than he actually needed. And Zeke, granted, he's one of the best running backs in the NFL, but he's had a lot of issues where one more slip up and he can be done with football possibly because they pay this guy, but they won't pay you when you do everything the right way. So I really understand why Dak is standing his ground. Like I said, I don't think that 45 a mil number is going to happen. I think it'll come down, but I think right now Dak has leverage to actually stand firm for just for a little bit. That's my opinion though. Yeah, no, we're all entitled to our opinion, but here's why I'm being bothered by this, because I saw an interview uh, with him during the Pro Bowl, and he actually mm -hmm. told a reporter that he never touched a football thinking about money. and that well, all athletes say that, though. Yeah. All but, athletes say that. But he said all he wants to do is play for the Dallas Cowboys and continue doing what he's doing. That's the PC message. That's the PC. Every, every athlete right now wants to do it for the love of the game, but you see Major League Baseball players speaking out that they're not going to play for 50% of the salary. And so that's that's where it is. It's like it's I get it when athletes say it's for the love of the game, but it's really not. It's for the love of the game and the money. When kids touch a football, they dream about going pro because they want to buy their mom a house and a better life. And buy, so the <laughs> money is tied to it. Um, but I get what Dak was trying to do. Of course, he can't say I'm all about my money because then he'll seem selfish. So he's like, of course, yeah, you know, if I want to do that, you know, I just want to play for the love of the game and be a Dallas Cowboy for life. Yeah, that sounds good until there's money involved. So. Um. <laughs> I, I honestly think, and uh, like I said, I don't want to drag this topic on too long. But it's a hot topic. It's a, it is a <laughs> hot topic. But I honestly think that another reason why this is being dragged on the way it is is that his agent is also up in Dax here. And he's also, oh, yeah, absolutely. you know, and he wants his money too. So exactly. that's also sending that wedge between mm -hmm. Jerry Jones and... And obviously, because Jerry Jones and Dak are not talking head to head, there's always that middle guy who's causing this confusion and this turmoil. So I honestly think that plays a factor as well. I just yeah. wish that Dak and Jerry would sit down and figure it out amongst each other and eliminate yeah. the middleman. Well, yeah, I, I think what's going to happen is, you know, there's two parts, the money and for the love of the game. So I think where you'll really see for the love of the game part comes in if Dak has to miss camp and miss practice and can't be with his teammates. I think his love of the game will not allow him to do that. I think that's when that will kick in. But for right now, there's nothing really going on. So let the money talk. Yeah, 100 percent. 100%. So I want to touch on Zeke a little bit. I don't know if you guys, if you saw, but, and I'm going to touch on his performance in the last year and the year before we know the year before he was suspended and so on. And then mm -hmm. last year he got his big money. He was up in Cabo, but Zeke didn't look a hundred percent last year. And I feel that, yeah, he still put up good numbers. I'll agree. Mm -hmm. We all agree. He put up, still put up some good numbers, but I think that there's certain games that he could have definitely been better. What do you think? And have you seen him this year? Because he looks a lot slimmer and a lot hungrier. It goes back to, to the money, man. I feel like, you know, even with Zeke and Demarcus Lawrence last year, it's like you work so hard to get to this certain point, this certain dollar figure that you have in your mind. You get the big contract, your mom set, your family set, everything is set. Do you really still have that hunger to be great? And I think that's what happens to a lot of athletes. They get to that point, that pinnacle that, that they work so hard for. And so they ease up a bit, which is human nature. So I think that's what happened last year. But then what kicks in is like, how much you know, do you want to be remembered? Do you want to have your name in life? Do you want to be you know, remembered amongst Emmitt Smith and all the Tony, Tony Dorsett's, the, the great Cowboys players? Or do you just want to be a rich player? I think now Zeke is now that he knows everything's taken care of as far as his future. He's really going to focus on his legacy. Um, this is why you kind of see him getting back in shape. And also Demarcus Lawrence getting back in shape. I mean, I watched Demarcus Lawrence on Instagram, and he, he stays working, man. So I think that's what's starting to kick in. It's like, okay, my family's taken care of. Now let's work on the legacy. Um, because you don't have that worry, you know, oh, my God, what if I get hurt? What if I do this? What if I do that? You're set for life. Um, so I think this year you'll you'll see the, 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 the Zeke that we've become accustomed to actually seeing i mean even though he did have a decent season i agree it was never that burst there's never that that breakthrough you know that home run zeke that's why i want to get back to that home run zeke versus just being that that hammer 
Yeah, I totally agree. I think with the new coaching staff, everybody's going to be hungry with the Dallas Cowboys because, the, 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 like I, like we said before, Mike McCarthy is bringing some big changes to the team. And I think nice. that's 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 putting fuel under these guys' butts, man, because I think they're all hungry because now we got rid of the clapper. We know who the clapper right. was. You right. know? We got <laughs> yeah, rid of it's clapped, it's clapped to that. A hundred percent. We got rid of the clapper. And... Uh, Mike McCarthy is bringing freshness to the team, and I think mm-hmm. the teams will come out will having something to prove uh, to everyone. Yeah, exactly. Because here it is, the new staff. These it's not Jason Gear. I mean, no one really remains besides Kellen Moore. So there's no loyalty tied. Now, of course, Jerry Jones is going to have his input, like, hey, you know, Zeke needs to be the guy. But let's say, for instance, you know, Zeke comes in out of shape, which is, I don't think he will. It comes out of shape to camp, and he's sluggish and not looking good. But Tony Pollard's going to have that pop. I mean, Mike McCarthy can say, you know what, I, I got a whole package for Tony Pollard that I'm going to run with. You know, let's let's do this. Let's give him 17 touches. And so, you know, there's no loyalty tied to this team because the staff doesn't know you. I mean, even right now, they really haven't even met you on a face-to-face basis. I'm sure everything's been digital if they've been customizing by the, the, the NFL rules. Um, but, you know, they really don't have that relationship built. So it's a brand new staff. You got to build a brand new relationship because I think it's kind of open season. Um, with the Dallas Cowboys with this year, which which I like. I think there's going to be a lot of competition when it comes to that secondary position because, I mean, besides J. Lou and Cheeto and Anthony Brown, I mean, there's a lot of new guys coming in, and I think it's going to be the best man wins, and so it's going to be a dogfight during camp and preseason. Yeah, man, I totally agree. So with that being said, going into the season, I want you to pick f- four players. I want you to mm-hmm. name who you would think your Fantastic Four will be going into the 2020 season so so i mean are we doing like sleepers because i mean we pretty much know three of them that should you know do i mean zig should be there Dak should be there coop should be there and then i would say more cd lamb over gallup i would say as far as offense but if i had to pick a defensive player i would say jalen smith so i feel like it's kind of cheating because we have way more than four weapons um but I would have to go Cooper, Dak, Zeke, and Jalen Smith to have big breakout years. I would say if I'd like pick like Pro Bowl caliber seasons, it would be those four. Guys, you heard it first. Remember what Jay Tuck said because when we go into the season, Green we, shot it. <laughs> we're gonna go back to this and we're gonna see if he was right. So I'm like, oh no, I didn't, I didn't say Cooper. I said CD <laughs> Lamb. <laughs> so my Fantastic Four are a bit different than yours. I definitely okay. got Dak. I got Zeke. I got Cooper and I got CD Lamb. I think CD Lamb will put up some crazy numbers this year. In 2019, this guy had 62 receptions, 1,327 yards with 15 touchdowns. So yeah. I think that he's going to come into the Dallas Cowboys, even if he's coming in as a rookie, and still put up those kind of numbers. Man, the world will blow up, especially my Twitter, if he comes out and becomes a Pro Bowl rookie of the year caliber player in the first season. Man, I hope I hope you're right, but I feel like someone is going to be sacrificed. I really don't think it's going to be Cooper. I really think it's going to be Gallup, because mm-hmm. um, like I said, you know, wearing that 88 and with the expectations CD Lamb has, he's not just going to get a few touches here and there. Like it's not going to be like, oh, you know, C Lamb had four catches for 48 yards. Like that's not going to be the standard for him. So I think they're going to try to get him the ball and get him the ball often and early. So how that really going to – who is going to take away – you know, it, it, dang sure better not be Zeke. So I think Gallup might be the person that sacrificed with all this. But if you kind of think – and I thought about this the other day, right? If Gallup had the season he has last year and then um, Coop has the season he had last year and then you just plug the numbers that Randall Cobb had for CeeDee Lamb, that's a pretty good season for a rookie. So if he can just do what Cobb did last year – that's a real good season for a rookie. And then as we grow into the next season, I think that's when the role will step up. So um, but I honestly personally don't want to be airing the ball out 100 times a game. I'd rather just feed Zeke and Pollard and kind of just go at, go at it that way. But I know that's not what Mike McCarthy is going to come in and do. Um, so it's going to be a lot of different ways that we can win when it comes to the game planning. Yeah, man, I just think that Mike McCarthy should come in with the same uh, kind of mentality frame that we had last year. we got to run the ball first. Um, yes. Get put some points on the board, and then once we do that, we can start airing the ball out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think yeah, I think it's going to depend on who we're playing, and that's where it's going to come. It might be one game where it's Zeke and Pollard, you know, 
30 plus carries and we might not even throw that much. So it's going to be about balance, but making sure that you're utilizing our weapons in the right situation versus it's first down. Here comes the Zeke dive that we all know that's coming. And, and, and so it's like, you know, mix things up. I would rather see it's first down and then we do a play action and then hit City Lamb up the stream scene. So a lot of different things, different looks, which I think that's what the most exciting thing as a Cowboys fan is that we're no longer looking at the Jason Garrett copy and paste vanilla offense and scheme. It's going to be so much more. Um, I mean, we might see different schemes. We're going to have Pollard and Zeke out there at the same time, which if you play Madden, that's something I run all the time. So um, <laughs> and it's very, very effective, um, to be honest with you. But I just, you know, different looks to keep the, the the defense on their toes because we definitely have the weapons to do it. And we haven't talked about Jarwin enough, but I think Jarwin's going to have a great season stepping into that tight end role being that 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 new guy. And also one of my personal favorites that a lot of people probably don't know much about will be Blake Bell. Um, he's going to be the second tight end. He's more of a blocking tight end. Um, but he's kind of like, you know, that hard nose. He's kind of like Jarwin. It's pretty much like we have two Blake Jarwins um, out there. So I think those two will be kind of fun to watch this season. Yeah, man, I totally agree with you. I saw a video with Blake Jarwin the other day, and he actually looks like he's hungry and he's ready to come out there and oh, yeah. and do what he's got to do. He knows he has big shoes to fill, replacing Jason Witten. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 100% <laughs> see you wearing that shirt. Uh, Jason, Jason Witten didn't have a bad season last year, but yeah. – you know, um, and you know where he's going to. So <laughs> Raiders. It's, I, I don't know. My, my, I have a few friends who are huge Raiders fans, man. I just can't see Jason Witten in a Raiders uniform. So when he comes to Kansas City, I'll probably go just to see him. Uh, but it's going to be killing me. So Yeah, 100%. I think uh, losing him was uh, a tough, I mean, in my opinion, was a tough loss. Uh, we lost some key players this year. Uh, we lost our center. And we yeah, all, uh, yeah. You know, the, Fredericton was a big, big, big key guy to our uh, to our game, and Looney's so, got got big shoes to fill. I haven't said this publicly, but I'm gonna ask you now: How much do you think the COVID nineteen played into that decision for Travis Frederick to retire? I, I I think there was more to it. I think um, you know he was he was coming off a few injuries, uh, uh -huh. I, you know, and I think that his wife was definitely is in his ear. You know, he's probably tired of getting beat up. You know, like these players, they, they get beat up. Like, I don't think anybody oh, yeah. realizes how much um, offensive linemen, defensive linemen, oh, yeah. these guys take a beating each game. In the trenches. You know, and yeah. the recovery rate, they don't have much time to recover to get back better to the next week to get healthy mm -hmm. again. So I think that that played a lot of factor. And you're right. The COVID-19 probably played a factor into that as well. And he probably said, you know right. what? I think I want to start spending more time with my family and step right. away. Right. I think with this, you know, his his disease and his immune system, I think it's just too many factors. And the reason why I say that is because I actually went to the Pro Bowl and I saw Travis Frederick. So it was like no signs that looked like, oh, man, he, he's done. He's had enough. I mean, he was out there interacting with fans, having a good old time. And then that bombshell just dropped and I felt sick. But I think Joe Looney is going to step up, play big. I mean, because people forget we went to the playoffs that year when Travis Frederick was out with Joe Looney. On that center, and then also the guy we drafted out of Wisconsin with Tyler. Uh, I call him Tyler Badass, but um, I think he's going to be able to step in and, and play too as well, and be that long-term solution eventually. So, I honestly, man, that's the thing. It's like I don't want to. I mean, knock on some wood. I really don't see any holes when it comes to our Dallas Cowboys offense. Like I don't see this area where I'm like, oh man, we we got that. You know, it's like it's really nothing that worries me. Um, which is good. I mean, and as far as defense is concerned, the secondary is kind of my my question mark. But from the offensive side of the ball, I expect this to be out the gate, you know, with the weapons that we have. So, yeah. Listen, I was doing timeout because I, I know you said Looney would be one of those key guys. And listen, I don't know if you saw some tape, but I watched a bit of tape last year on Looney because I just want to uh -huh. see uh, when Fredericton was injured, Looney stepped in. And if you go and see the sacks, the sacks that Dak took last year were because of Looney. So, because of Looney. You know, so yeah. I'm, I'm looking at on the flip side of things. Looney also has some big shoes to fill, and he's going to yeah. have to do a better job of protecting Dak. Yeah, he, I think, but I think, you know, what happens is you, you kind of you ease up. Like, I mean, Travis Frederick is playing, and so it's like, all right, well, you know, Travis Frederick is perfectly healthy, so you're really not on 
on on go mode. You're not on standby really like you should be because you think, oh, he's not coming out anytime soon. Um, so I'm really not going to play today. So I think it's more like now Looney knows that he has to be the guy for a little bit. So I think he's going to take that challenge on his shoulders and, you know, do a great job better than he probably did last year. But like I said, I think it's going to be you know, Looney, but I think, you know, with the, the new rookie that we drafted, I could see Tyler definitely stepping in there sometime soon if if Looney was to go down or there's any any holdup. So, um, you know, we still got we still got some of the great wall of Dallas with Tyron Smith and Zach Martin still. Oh yeah, um, but, yeah, yeah. You know, but but Lyle Collins took a huge leap. I think Connor Williams is one of those players that you know he's slowly progressing throughout time. So I think this year he'll be more solid. So I mean, I guess if there had to be a question mark, it'd be that center position. But I'm honestly not really worried about that. Yeah, man, that's good to know. And I, I, one of us is optimistic. I'm always <laughs> I'm always optimistic when it comes to the Dallas Cowboys. But when we lose certain key players, you know, you kind of step back and you start to wonder. Hmm. Is the biggest th- loss I would say would don't, be don't Byron s- Jones. Don't Rock. say. Oh, 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 okay, never mind. No, you said it. You said Byron uh, Jones. Uh, 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 All right, yeah, Byron <laughs> Jones. <laughs> I won't even touch that. Um, that's, okay. Everybody has different opinions about Byron Jones. A lot of people right. are upset. Um, and guys, if you were upset, do you think that Jerry Jones should have did what he had to do to keep Jer- uh, to keep Byron Jones with us? Uh, if you're not commenting right now during the live stream, definitely comment below. I want to get people's intake on that. Uh, well, let me clarify then, since you're going to comment and chat about that. I'm not saying we should have paid Byron Jones, but I'm saying losing him hurts. <laughs> so, okay. Okay. So, so yeah, 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 definitely, definitely, guys. I want to hear your comments about Byron Jones. So, obviously, you know, there's a lot of rumors right now, and I think, um, and I, I want to touch it. I'm going to touch it. Uh, Gallup being mm-hmm. traded for. Do you know who I'm talking about? Small Adams. Yep. So yeah. I, I, I don't. I don't personally think, in my opinion, that would be a good move. On my, on my, again, guys, this is my opinion only. Uh, I, I don't see that happening. I'd like to see maybe Adams coming over, but not for Gallup. Hmm. And why is that? I mean, let me let me let me take over the interview a little bit and ask you the question, Sid. So why why is that? Why wouldn't you do that? Listen, I think Gallup showed us what he's able to do last year. Um, and I think that going into training camp and with the changes that we've done to the coaching staff and him being coached properly, I think he's going to become an elite receiver just as much as Cooper. So I don't think letting him go would be a smart move to do right now. Okay, okay. Me personally, if I'm Jerry Jones and I'm sitting in my big office or my yacht, probably on my yacht right now, and, <laughs> and I had this um, this opportunity to uh, make this decision where it's like Michael Gallup and maybe a second for Jamal Adams, I am pressing start button on that trade right now. And here's the reason why. Like, I like Gallup. He's a great player and a great guy. I've met him a few times and have an autographed jersey. He's a, he's a really nice dude. But I think he is going to be the person that gets sacrificed due to the DAC contract. So I think, you know, we, we have them this year, but I think eventually with the DAC contract, whatever that number is, especially if it's in the 40s, then he's going to be the player that we'll probably lose next year. And then you'll kind of see CeeDee Lamb slide over and being that other guy as we look for another slot position guy. So I think that's kind of the reason why they moved on CeeDee Lamb, besides him just being dynamic, is that, you know, we're probably going to have to sacrifice Gallup for this contract. Because um, you still got to pay Van Der Esch depending on his situation, too. Um, so I think, you know, Gallup might be the casualty of everything because he is a great player. And it's going to be teams out there willing to pay for that price, which I don't think the Cowboys will be able to afford. So if you're able to get Jamal Adams, which is a, a game changer, because that's the thing. We already have Cooper. He's a game changer. Dak's a game changer. Zeke's a game changer. Olaf's a game changer. On defense, we have great players. But we really don't have a game changer. We don't really have that guy that's like, oh, man, we got to deal with this guy tomorrow. Like, you know, we have a lot of good pieces out there. Getting Jamal Adams and moving him around at that safety position, that's a game changer. That's that's when the that's when uh, Daniel Jones and Carson Wentz come to the line and they're pointing, they're pointing to find out where Jamal Adams is right now. So if you have an opportunity to get a player like that, you know, I would do it. Now, granted, 
The same thing with Gallup. You're going to have to pay Jamal Adams. That means the Jets, that's what the whole fuss is about. They can't can't afford them, or they can't afford them. They just don't want to. So you're going to have to pay for either one of them. So if you had to pay, then I'm going to pay for Jamal Adams versus Gallup. Yeah, man, 100%. Listen, I just want to chime in on a few people here leaving some comments. I want to send a shout out to Jason Jeremy. What's up, my man? Um, a new guy that I met recently. Great guy. And he this he has a question for both of us. Actually, I'm going to read it out to you. My question for both of you. What is the future of football? Will it be back to normal in 2021? And do you think the Cowboys have access to more player because of what's up right now? Hmm. So I'll chime in on that a, lo a little bit. Okay. Um, do I think football will go back to normal in 2021? A hundred percent. I think by this time next year, this whole COVID situation will be uh, hopefully panned out and there'll be some kind of, um, you know, pill or whatever you want to call it um, to be able to get this whole situation cleared out. Mm -hmm. Will the Cowboys have bigger opportunities last year, next year? Listen, we want to focus on 2020. 2020 when vision. 2020 vision. <laughs> we don't even want to think about 2021 because we have too many players to even start paying next year. Right. right. So I think that right now, the Dallas Cowboys, Jerry Jones, Mike McCarthy, we're focused on 2020 and what we need to do to get to that Super Bowl because the Dallas Cowboys, and I know you're going to agree with me, this is the year that we are going to the Super Bowl with the weapons that we have. Yeah, I, it was funny. I just posted on something on, on my, my Facebook, in my Facebook page. I also got a, a Cowboys fans only Facebook page. But I said 2020 has been so crazy that I feel like the Dallas Cowboys are going to win the Super Bowl. I mean, what a better way to top off the, <laughs> the year of all this craziness that's been going on in the Cowboys winning the Super Bowl. So I think that we, we definitely have the weapons. And finally, we have a staff that we can trust and feel comfortable with. I feel like there's really no reason why we le – okay, Super Bowl will be great, but at least a deep, solid playoff run. And as a Cowboys fan, that's all I want. I want consistency. I mean, granted, it would be nice to win Super Bowls every year, but I feel like I want to go and go to the divisional round this year and get a, get a win and then go to the conference championship. And if we fall short, we fall short. The next year, go to the conference championship and then go to a divisional and then go to the Super Bowl. Like, I want that consistency. I don't want the – we win a divisional playoff game, we lose the next round, but next year we're going to be back, and then we go 8-8, eight and eight, don't make the playoffs at all. And the next year we bounce back, like, I'm tired of that fluctuation. Yep. I just want a steady curve of inclining. I mean, granted, it would be nice just to get a Super Bowl now, but consistency. Because so I feel like even with the team that we had last year, there was really no excuse why we didn't even make the playoffs. Like, there was no reason why we should have. We lost so many stupid games to Josh Allen, um, and it's just like, you know, I feel like, um, you know, we need to limit that, those dumb Jets games, you know, stupid games like that. Yep. I think, you know, Mike McCarthy, you know, just off of coaching alone and talent alone, we should naturally win. So once we eliminate that, I think we have a good chance of, you know, just having that consistent Dallas Cowboys football that we were accustomed to back in the 90s. I mean, I told a lot of my friends back in the, the Aikman, Urban, and, and, and you know, and, and Emma Smith days, it's like going to the playoffs is no big deal. It's like that's when the season actually started. It's like, okay, we made the playoffs, big whoop, okay. Now is when the fun begins, but now we press so hard just to get to a playoff game. I'm like, no, when the standard needs to be playoffs and Super Bowls. That's it. Yeah, man, I totally, totally agree with you. Guys, you heard it for, here first from It's Your Boy Sid and Jay Tuck. The Dallas Cowboys will be going to the Super Bowl this year. Well, I'm going to put this out there. I already have, like, I said this on my Twitter. And you go back. I said, I already have my hotel to Tampa book, which I do. And I said, if the Cowboys draft CD Lamb, I'm booking my flight. So I'm already booked for Tampa, man. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm already booked. <laughs> and so um, now the question is, if they delay the season and push it back, I might have to adjust some things around. Um, but as of right now, I'm going to Tampa. So and I hope to see the Cowboys there, too. Yeah, man, I'm looking to go to the uh, AT&T Stadium this year in November. I'm actually trying to get tickets for the Steelers and mm -hmm. Cowboys game, which is going to be in a crazy, crazy game within itself. I actually, yeah. I actually have the Cowboys taking an L in that game, guys. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm actually gonna go see a game where I think the Cowboys will take an L. Um, 
Yeah, but depending on what's happening with the season, I don't know if I'll be making it out there, but it's to see, right? It's to see. Why would you have us taking an L against the Steelers? Just listen, curious. Uh, listen, Ben is... If, uh, he's I, you got to give him his props. You got to yeah. give Ben Ben. You got to give him his props. He ends up mm-hmm. pulling that W when he needs to get at that W. They have a lot of good key guys going into the 2020 season as well, uh, and I think they've made some they've made some big moves. And yeah. we we always seem to struggle against them. So I have the Dallas Cowboys losing five games this year, and unfortunately, mm-hmm. that's one of the games that I have them losing. Fair, fair. I mean, they're, they're solid. Now, the key is if Big Ben is healthy to even play by then. But, um, you know, you, the Steelers, and, that's, and that comes back to the coaching. Even with Mike Tomlin, no matter what goes on with the team, you know the Steelers are always going to be at least competitive. You know, yep. so that's one of the good things about it um, with Mike Tomlin and his staff and how he's done such a good job. It's like even when Ben was out last year and they're playing with almost a third-string quarterback and the whole A-B situation and – you know, uh, Juju goes down. They were still competitive some way, somehow. They're always going to be a dog fight. So I can see why you can pick the Steelers to win that game. Yeah, man, there's a few games. I want to know, what do you think that the Dallas Cowboys will do this year? What do you think their record will be going in, ending with this season? I, to be honest, I have us at 9-7, and 10-6. And, and the reason why is because, like I said, it's a brand new staff. And so it's going to take a lot to kind of get things in sync because, as I mentioned, we have a lot of weapons to utilize. And so for us to kind of just, with this whole situation, depending on how our offseason is and how training camp goes, kind of go in with a brand new team, brand new system, brand new identity, and go up to Los Angeles where they have this brand new stadium, but the team and Sean McVay has already been intact. Plus, we kicked their tail last season, so they're going to be ready for that. Um, I can kind of see us taking a loss that first game. Um, so I think there's going to be a few bumps in the road early um, before we actually figure out our new identity with Mike McCarthy and staff. Um, but I think eventually we'll start to see things um, emerge, and which is what, as a Cowboys fan, I want. If we start off slow but end strong, that's perfectly fine. I'm, I'd rather prefer that versus the, the strong starts and the weak finishes. Um, so I think probably around, around week six, that's when you'll kind of see, you know, the the, the leap that CD Lamb will probably take too as well. And that's where we'll start to take off a lot. So I have like round nine and seven, ten and six, um, give or take. Well, but we're going to the playoffs. We're going to the playoffs at nine and seven, you think? Okay. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. It's the NFC East. Uh, okay. Well, I have it a little bit different. I have the Dallas Cowboys going 11 and five this year. Um, mm-hmm. But I'd like to know who do you think the top teams that the Dallas Cowboys will be struggling against? And who? why do you think we'll take that L to those teams? And I'll voice my opinion afterwards so you can... Okay. So I have the Rams. I think that'll be kind of a loss. Uh, I have, without looking at the schedule, I have Baltimore as a loss. I have uh, splitting with Phillies. So I'm taking a loss to Philly. And then who else is on the radar? Uh, I think we'll beat Minnesota. The 49ers game is kind of flip up. I think maybe we'll lose to the 49ers um, for that one. And then the thing is with the Cowboys, and this is like, this is the Jason Gary in me, right? There's always those stupid games you have to kind of throw in, like what the heck happened? I can't believe we lost that game. So I'll throw in the one I'm kind of on edge about is probably the Cardinals game. Um, with Kyler Murray and, and D-Hop, I can see it's just you know, kind of snoozing, getting knocked, rocked to sleep and losing that game. And then um, I forgot there was one more. Um, I, I think we'll handle the Browns perfectly fine. Um, so I said the Ravens. Yeah, so I mean, so it could be that Steelers game. It could be, you know, just a random, random game. But I know I always kind of give myself a buffer for those random what the hell games. Um, that we're accustomed to using. So hopefully there I don't we don't have those, but um you just never know. So like I said, um you know I'll, probably I'll, about six six to seven. Um, I'll I'll, chi- I'll chime in here so you just so you can because I we have a really we have a everybody's saying the Dallas Cowboys have an easy schedule going into the twenty twenty. Nah. No we don't. No, no we don't. No. Because the first game we got the Rams, which I mm-hmm. have an L. I, I hate to say it. The second week we got Atlanta. Atlanta, I got a W. All right, so okay. we got we got Seattle, I got 
the Dallas Cowboys taking the L at Seattle. We always struggle against Russell Wilson. I got to give Russell Wilson his props, man. He's worth. Okay. He's he, yeah yeah. He, there we go. He's worth the the money that they they paid him and mm-hmm. what he does to the Cowboys. He always finds a way to pick us apart, uh, third and fourth quarter. So mm-hmm. that's going to be an L for me. We got the Browns. I got a W for the Browns. New York. <laughs> Do I even mm-hmm. do I need even right. to say it? Clapper's over there, so he's going to destroy. Right. <laughs> he's going to destroy them anyway. So I got him right. getting a W. Poor, poor Saquon. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So then we got uh, who do we have after that? The Cardinals. I have. Cardinals. The, I have. I have a W for the Cardinals. Okay. Uh, Washington, I got a W. Eagles. I think that we're gonna. We should take those two games. I don't see us having a problem with the Eagles. I think we're coming back with a vengeance. We didn't like what happened last year. And I think the Dallas Cowboys are kind of embarrassed from that. I think we, we're we going to have uh, a reason to come back and uh, give them both, uh, the Eagles, both games an L. Um, uh, Steelers, I got an, an, I got an L for the Steelers. Oh, no, I got an L for the Steelers. Yep, 100%. Yeah. Minnesota, that's a game that I'm also struggling with. Right. Uh, I think we're going to get an L with Minnesota. Then we're playing, if that's, Washington, Washington again. We're gonna give them an L. We got Baltimore, which is the last game I think that we're gonna struggle with, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Um, Bengals, no problem. We're gonna give them an L. Uh, Washington, we should, we should beat um, the 49ers. Sorry, the 49ers. And again, like I said, Eagles, we're gonna beat them, and the Giants, we're gonna beat them. So that's yeah. my 11 and five. So I have the schedule pulled up in front of me, and that's the reason why I split it with uh, the Eagles because you got to think about we're going to play the 49ers and then circle right back after another emotional game and then play the Eagles at home. Like, that's two very emotional games, which the Cowboys never really do. But like I said, that's under the Jason Garrett era. Mike, Mc- I think if we come out of those, imagine if we come out of those two games, beat the 49ers at home, Beat the Eagles at home, turn around and beat the Giants. Like that's steamrolling into the playoffs, like right there. Like, um, so ideally, if we get those, I mean, because if you think about who is our competition, right? And going to the road to the Super Bowl, you have the 49ers, you have Green Bay, you have the Saints, Vikings, Seattle, um, yeah, and then possibly Philly. So, I mean, if we're able to cut down two of those trees, you know, at the end of the season, that means we're playing some really good football. So, um, I hope that's the case. Yeah, man, I, I totally agree with you. I hope that I see us making the playoffs, and if we steam through all through the playoffs and have that momentum, I see us not being the team to be eliminated in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. You know. Right. So, listen. Um, any final thoughts? Any any concerns? Other concerns that you might think that the Dallas Cowboys will have. I'd love to hear. Love having you on. This has been great. So I want to continue this going. Um, If anybody in the chat has any questions that you want to ask Jay Tuck or myself, please feel free to do so. And even after the the live stream, comment below, and we definitely will take the time to answer your questions. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, as far as concerns, man, honestly, it's just a secondary but I think it's just really just getting this team together, getting them all together on the same page under this new staff. Um, but like I said, I'm excited, man. I haven't been this excited for a Cowboys team in a long time. And I think it's partially due to a fresh new staff. Because even though we've had Parcells and we had Wade, you know, and Jason Garrett, Jason Garrett was always just kind of in the picture. Uh, but now that he's fully gone, man, I'm just ready for a breath of fresh air. Um, with this this new team and new staff, man, adding on City Lamb and just not just City Lamb, man, but this overall draft. I mean, the way we crushed this draft this year, like how can you not be excited for this season? Because I mean, we killed it every pick. There's not one pick. Like I was doing my draft recap and I was really trying to like, what's a pick I can cherry pick to say like was a bad pick? Like the only one I could do is like our seventh round with the Ben DiNucci guy. But I'm like, even that wasn't really a bad pick. Cause it's just like a, a seventh round pick. And plus. Now we have a solid backup if something was to happen with Dak with his negotiations and everything with Andy Dalton. So it's like, man, I feel like we're really in the captain's chair as far as the season's going. We just got to have the season. <laughs> yeah, man, 100%. I'm with you. Um, I got a comment in the, in the thing in the chat, obviously. Um, Jason says, y'all getting me hyped for the game. 
Let's, let's, let's go. Let's yeah. go, Jason. <laughs> well done, Dallas fellas. Listen, 100%. We're all hyped. I Listen, I, it's Sunday right now, and I had to do something about the Cowboys. That I just want the game to start. I want uh, training camp to start. It, it's enough. I, I think I'm driving my wife crazy as well. Uh, cause yeah. I'm like, there's nothing to do at least on Sundays, yeah. Sundays, once football starts 10 AM, 10 o'clock at night, nonstop right. football. Let's go. Right. I'm hyped. Right. right. It's exactly, man. And with everything going on in the world, as we talked about earlier going on right now, you know, it's cool to be around Dallas Cowboys fans and just have something that we're all so passionate about that unites us, man, and having a good time all talking about what we love to talk about, man. So that's, you know, one of my biggest joys. Um, so keep up the content, man. I love the channel, Said man. Great guy, man. Love working with you. We're going to definitely do it again. Um, and so you guys are going to have to hold me uh, accountable when it comes to my 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 my, my breakout four this year. Um, but, yeah, we'll definitely do it. I'll bring you on my channel soon, man. So a lot more to come. But I'm excited. So um, for everyone wanting to follow me, Cowboys fans only. So Cowboys fully fan, spelled out fans only on um YouTube and then also on the Facebook group. Feel free to join that. And then on Twitter is at JTuck151, um, the Cabo Cowboy. I follow all Cowboys fans back, the good, the bad, the ugly. So, like I said, I just love to talk to my Cowboys people. And I can't wait to be, hopefully, at the stadium with everyone and just tailgating, high fiving, doing all that stuff. That's the only way, man. I don't want the social distancing way, man. I love being surrounded by my, my Dallas Cowboys fans at the stadium spilling Cowboys Rita's and Miller lights and just going crazy. Um, there's nothing like it, man. So I just can't wait to be out there with everyone. Stay safe and stay smart, man. Like I said, appreciate you bringing me on the channel. Yeah, man. A hundred percent guys. You heard it first here first. Definitely go check out J Tuck's channel. You heard all his where to go find him. Twitter subscribe to him. Don't forget to click that subscribe button on my channel as well. Thank you for taking the time to be with me on this Sunday afternoon, Jay Tuck. You're a great oh, man. guy, man. Crazy knowledge. Guys, please, please go click that subscribe button. And don't forget to stay safe. It's your boy, Sid. And we're out. <laughs>